Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to discuss data analytics with respect to the credit sale decisions that companies make. So basically, um, when I talk about credit sale decisions, I I'm just referring to when companies sell things and don't get paid right away, right? They sell it on an agreement to be paid later, what we call a credit sale. Companies can use data analytics to assist with these decisions in, in numerous ways, um, and I have kind of the big ones bulleted over here to the right. Um, I'll start with the first one, credit worthiness. Um, so companies can look at, at their previous history, their, their data, of who tends to pay uh, when they extend credit. Um, they could analyze customers based on their credit scores, right? Uh, you know, if, if a customer has a credit score of 680, do they tend to pay? If they have a credit score of 500, do they tend to pay? Uh, they could look at customer income levels, uh, or if it's business to business, they could look at uh, customer revenue streams. Um, they could look at, um, um, you know, how how often the customer purchases. Um, do frequent purchasers pay more than than less frequent purchasers, and so forth and so on, right? So basically, uh, you can look at all the data you have on how customers have behaved in the past to then. Uh, essentially predict how are they likely to behave in the future based on a given set of parameters, and then you can decide which of those parameters you want to use to make those credit decisions. Who will you extend the credit to? Who won't you extend credit to? All right, next up, discount payment terms. So um, when we talk about discount payments, what we're referring to is um, when you make a credit sale, often you will entice your customer to pay sooner by offering them a discount, right? You'll say, hey, you, you only have to pay me in 30 days or 45 days, uh, but if you pay me in 10, you get a 1% discount, something of that nature. And so again, looking back at your prior history with your customers, you could see, okay, uh, if a, a an outstanding receivable goes, uh, say, more than, uh, I don't know, 10 days, 20 days, uh, does the likelihood of it getting paid go down, right? Dan data analytics can tell you that. And so it could tell you where that cutoff of is, where where uh, you're going to be riskier if you let the the collection remain outstanding for 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 longer than it should. And so that can kind of help you decide, okay, what does the due date need to be, or if not the due date itself, what does our enticement payment date, our discount date, need to be? Right, ten days, fifteen days, whatever the case may be. Um, you can look at your history to see how much of a discount do you need to actually entice someone to pay early. Is 1% enough? Is 2% enough? So forth and so on, right? Your data analytics, your historical transactions um, with some statistical analyses can kind of help you flesh these things out. So going forward, you know what to offer on your products. All right, and then last up, return policies. So um, I have this broken up into two pieces, the first being limitations, the second being physical transfer. Um, and so limitations, I'm, I'm simply referring to, you know, on a return policy, do you need to restrict certain brands from being returned? Um, do you need to restrict returns to a certain number of days, a certain level of damage, a certain whatever, right? Your data analytics can help flesh this out because you can look at your return history. You can see where the trends in the items getting returned are. Um, you can you can you can see where are you losing the most money with those returns, and therefore that's where you should focus your kind of um, return aversion efforts. Let's 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 call it right. So limitations on the the customer's ability to return or enticement not to return is even a way to think about it. Um, those can be kind of fleshed out with your data analytics. Um, physical transfer is something that's kind of a more recent phenomena where if a customer has a damaged good or at least claims to have a damaged good, you may not know for sure as a company, um, you may opt to refund the customer or replace the item without even asking for the item back. And again, this goes into that whole performing analyses on your prior returns to see which returns end up being kind of profitable and which ones are not profitable. Because you could have returns that come back and you're able to reshelve the item, resell the item, so forth and so on, you have returns that come back where you might be sitting there going, wait a minute, the shipping to get it back cost more than any profit we would ever get out of it, right? And so by looking at those analytics, you can actually decide, should we even ask for the product back? Or should we just take the customer's word for it that something's wrong with it and not cover that shipping cost, right? Or if you need it back, but but 
but you're worried about this kind of shipping cost situation, then you put the burden on the customer to pay the shipping cost, right? There's many ways you can tackle these issues, but again, your data analytics can help you discover what the issues are to then help you make those um, prescriptive decisions. All right, that's it for this one, data analytics with respect to credit sales. I uh, hope you found it helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.